Classification systems exist for just about everything you can think of. Moreover, things can be classified in more than one way. Take cars, for example. They can be classified by year, make, model, and even custom features. Such classifications obviously help people instantly picture what a car looks like in their mind. When I say something like Porsche, you think of a small car with two doors that lies close to the ground. When I say Hummer, you can imagine a very big car, four doors, and one that may need a step for some people to get into. This is why astronomers classify spiral galaxies into different types, to help visualize what they look like through an easy name. This lesson will tell you how they're classified so that you'll know what they look like if someone mentions their name, and will also review why they look the way they do. S Little a galaxies, where s little a is short for spiral type a, are spiral galaxies that have a big central bulge and smooth, broad spiral arms. Take a look at the image on your screen to see what I mean. Note how the bulge is very prominent and how the spiral arms are very tightly wound. Spiral type B galaxies are spiral galaxies that have a moderately sized central bulge and moderately well-defined spiral arms. The galaxy shown on screen right now is a spiral type B galaxies, where the arms aren't as tightly wound as spiral type A galaxies. Spiral type C galaxies are spiral galaxies that have a very small central bulge, as well as narrow and well-defined spiral arms. NGC 4321, which you see now, is a type of spiral type C galaxy. Note how the central bulge is very small and the arms are very loosely wound in comparison to the spiral type A galaxy. Like cars have a reason for their shape and size, so do these galaxies. I mean, Hummers are made to lug a lot of stuff around, at least the original ones were. And Porsches have been built for speed. The way they look is representative of how they function or what's going on inside them. Firstly, the formation of stars occurs mainly in the disk of the galaxy. Thus, in places like the spiral arms, you'll find a lot of star formation and a lot of massive, hot, and young blue stars. However, the central bulge of the galaxy contains older stars and has little star formation. Massive blue stars die off quickly. Thus, the stars that can live the longest are of low mass and are red in color. This helps to explain why the central bulge of a galaxy is yellower or redder in color than the disk. Now, the difference in the shapes of these three types of galaxies can be partially explained by one interesting observation. Astronomers know that interstellar dust and gas are like the two ingredients from which stars form. The more interstellar dust and gas there is in a galaxy, the more active the star formation, and the larger a galaxy's disk, and therefore the smaller the central bulge. Observation tells us that 25% of the mass of a spiral type C galaxy is made up of interstellar dust and gas compared to only 4% for a spiral type A galaxy, which has a big central bulge and a little disk. Because there is so much dust and gas in a spiral type C galaxy, there is a lot of star formation going on. Therefore, its disk, where star formation occurs, is large, and its central bulge, where little star formation occurs, is small compared to the spiral type A galaxy. To help remember all of this, just use one simple trick. Think of a spiral type C galaxy as being a small central galaxy, meaning it has a small central bulge. Knowing what we just went over, you know the disk has to be the exact opposite size of the bulge, really big. And because its disk is large, there is a lot of interstellar gas and dust and lots of star formation. Spiral type A is opposite of the spiral type C galaxy, and obviously, spiral type B is just a middle ground between the two. There is another kind of spiral galaxy beyond the three we went over. A barred spiral galaxy is a spiral galaxy that has a bar-shaped region running through its nucleus, the ends of which are where the spiral arms originate from. Barred spiral galaxies are also subdivided like the normal spiral galaxies are, except for a barred spiral galaxy they are divided as SBA 
SBB and SBC. Everything else is basically the same though. There's really no new stuff to memorize. For example, both a spiral type C and a barred spiral type C galaxy have a very small central bulge and loosely wound arms compared to their respective type A galaxy. There are about twice as many barred spiral galaxies as there are ordinary spiral galaxies. And as a final end note, there are galaxies called S0 galaxies or lenticular galaxies, which have a bright flat disk, central bulge, but no spiral arms. They are sort of a middle ground between elliptical galaxies and spiral galaxies. We went over several different galaxies in this lesson, namely spiral galaxies. They were spiral type A galaxies, spiral galaxies that have a big central bulge and smooth broad spiral arms, spiral type B galaxies, spiral galaxies that have a moderately sized central bulge and moderately well-defined spiral arms, spiral type C galaxies, spiral galaxies that have a very small central bulge as well as narrow and well-defined spiral arms, as well as a barred spiral galaxy, which is a spiral galaxy that has a bar-shaped region running through its nucleus, the ends of which are where the spiral arms originate from. And finally, S0 galaxies, or lenticular galaxies, which have a bright, flat disk, central bulge, but no spiral arms.